Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we're two Swedes and we love design. Mm -hmm. And in this video we're going to talk about the Danish architect Paul Kjærholm. Is and, it architect? Yeah, he's, he's an architect. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and more specifically, where he got his inspiration from. Mm -hmm. And Kjærholm is indeed one of Denmark's best known furniture designers, but he has nevertheless sometimes been accused of stealing ideas from predecessors. But people who say so understand very little about design and the design process. The whole Danish design boom during the last century was based on the study of historical furniture types, later refined and adapted for modern use and production methods. And Paul Kjærholm was no exception from this, even though he often chose to use steel instead of wood, creating his furniture icons. Yeah. Paul Kjærholm was mm. born in Danish Österbro in 1929 and begun his career as a cabinet maker's apprentice in 1949. Soon he came to study at the School of Arts and Crafts in Copenhagen, where he fell under the supervision of Hans J. Wegner. Yeah. <laughs> Wegner was impressed by the young student, so impressed that he hired him part-time in his studio. That's cool. Yeah. Studying antique furniture models was central at the school, and Kjærholm learned a lot, not least from Ole Wanscher and his book Möbeltyper, Furniture Types, published in 1932. According to him, most furniture didn't require complex structures. Simple geometric shapes were instead used to create functional yet beautiful objects. But he nevertheless got inspiration from historical predecessors when he created his modern archetypes. Inspired by traditional Japanese windscreens, he developed the modular room divider PK-111? Oh, oh, uh, 11, I would one say, 11. but that's, not, that's okay. just a matter of taste, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> In 1956. In Japan, flexible walls had for centuries been used to create private spaces, and Kjærholm was far from the first among Western architects to create modern versions of this. Alvar Aalto, as well as Charles and Ray Eames, had already created room dividers made from wood, but Kjærholm took the concept one step further. His room divider is constructed from molded pieces of laminated mm -hmm. wood connected to create a wall of desired length. Yeah. That's smart. Mm. The wall is only 140 centimeters high, making it a perfect room uh, divider when sitting. Yeah. But a standing person, on the other hand, can easily see the surrounding room. Yeah, that's clever, because yeah. ad otherwise it, it can be quite, quite, I mean, claustrophobic yeah, or yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Another piece of furniture highly inspired by ancient predecessors is the folding stool PK-91, designed by Kjærholm in 1961. And folding stools have a long history, used already at the Bronze Age and not least by the ancient Egyptians. Several modern designers have produced their own versions of it. Uh, in 1957, Ole Wanscher designed a, uh, a stool highly inspired by an ancient stool found at the Egyptian Museum in uh, Berlin. Mm -hmm. uh, also the father of Danish modern design, uh, Kåre Klint, designed a folding stool in 1930 uh, for the cabinet maker Rud Rasmussen. And it was at the time considered uh, to be way too complicated to produce, but, what but it was uh, featured in several magazines and books. A prototype was exhibited at the 1956 Clint Memorial Exhibition and serial production was later started. Uh, the PK-91 by Kjærholm is indeed inspired by Clint. Both Clint and the Kjærholm paid huge attention to details and made sure the stool looked just as good uh, folded. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's good that's thing. Yeah. To solve this problem, Kjærholm twisted the metal construction and used ball bearings to uh, make sure uh, the stool folded perfectly uh, flat. Mm -hmm. And I think they are 
extremely good example of how to create a perfect uh, uh, folding stool in wood and one in uh, yeah. in iron. Yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's two great iron, pieces huh? of furniture. Yeah, steel. <laughs> steel. <laughs> I don't know. And now let's talk about the inspiration Scherholm got from the German architects Lili Reich and Mies van der Rohe. In the 1920s and 30s, the two designed a range of highly modern furniture made from steel, among them the Barcelona chair and the MR10 cantilever chair. Nowadays Mies is often getting credit for these furniture, but they were indeed made in collaboration with Reich. Yeah. She was the experienced furniture designer who taught Mies about furniture design, not the other way around, <laughs> yeah. that is so often claimed. Yeah. We have a video about this if you want to know more and are interested. Yeah, check that out. Their best known chair is probably the Barcelona chair, designed to be exhibited in the German pavilion at the 1929 Barcelona World's Fair. When Scherholm designed the wall-mounted modular sofa PK26 in 1956, it was a development of the Barcelona chair. But instead of uh, the crossed legs of the Barcelona, the PK26 had no legs at all. <laughs> That's innovative. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to note uh, that the diagonally placed buttons of the sofa... Um, they resemble the cushions used for the original pair of Barcelona chairs used at the 1929 exhibition. When the serial production started, it was uh, redesigned in a, well, far from successful way. But Scherholm chose to use the diagonally placed uh, buttons for his sofa. Mm -hmm. The MR60 was mm -hmm. designed by Mies and Reich in 1930 to be used at the Villa Tugendhat in the Czech town of Bernau. A version with armrest was also developed named MR70. In a way, it's, it's a combination between the Barcelona chair and the cantilever chair MR10. Mm -hmm. Scherholm was fascinated by this chair and refined it when designing the PK20 in 1968. Unlike its predecessors, the PK20 had no loose cushions. Instead, it was upholstered using wicker or leather mounted directly over the metal framework. Yeah. And then another chair designed by Mies and Reich for Villa Togenhat mm -hmm. uh, was the armchair MR50. MR <laughs> uh, often uh, simply called Bernau chair. And it's, it was a refined cantilever chair made from flat steel, but the tubular steel version was also developed at the same time. Mm -hmm. And in 1974, Scherholm further developed this design, creating the armchair PK-13. And I mean, when comparing uh, these two chairs side by side, it's very easy to see the resemblance. Mm -hmm. Also, day beds have a long history. Mm -hmm. They were used already in ancient Egypt and somewhat later in the Roman Empire. An iconic piece of furniture created by Mies and Reich is the Barcelona daybed, constructed from wooden frames standing on four metal legs. The leather mattress with symmetrical buttons gives the daybeds its characteristic appearance. When Scherholm developed a daybed of his own in 1957, he was for sure highly inspired by the Barcelona daybed. But he took the design one step further, removing the cylindrical cushion and simplified the construction of the frame even more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, finally, we must also mention the coffee table MR150, designed by Mies and Reich to be used with, the, uh, with his uh, Tugendhat chairs. Mm. Um, it's a simple construction with a welded metal base and a square glass top. Um, in 1956, Scherholm developed uh, this table into the PK61. Instead of a welded uh, frame, it's held together using industrial screws. 
and the legs continues upwards holding the tabletop in place yeah. and it makes this table a functionalist table in another way than the original yeah, one yeah, from yeah. the 30s but is what we're saying that Shadow was inspired by Mies and Reich very yes. much indeed he was yeah. but he did something new and, and something own of their mm, designs mm, 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 yeah. so i would say it's definitely not copies in any way. It's a development and an inspiration. Yeah. But he did something of his own. Yeah. And that's why he was such a great uh, designer. And he also adapted these furniture for modern um, uh, production methods. And yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's also important. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was some examples of uh, mm-hmm. Paul Scherhorn creating archetypes from historical furniture models. Yeah. And hope you found it interesting. Yes, and if you did, please click thumbs up. And subscribe yeah. and follow us on Instagram. We are called Scandinavian Design 101. Yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks. Thanks.